I have a lot of software installed. One might say a little bit too much. One might be a little bit right. I need to clean this system up. It is never going to happen though. There is just way too much garbage on it. And most of it is basically because I test out software every so often. I forget to delete it. And it just keeps building up and building up and building up. The only way this is going to be cleaned up is reinstalling a new system. But over the years, there are certain pieces of software that have always stuck with me that even though I've tried to replace in some cases, it's just not going to happen. So let's talk about some of that Linux software that I can't live without. By far the best place to start is Dmenu. I use Dmenu in every place I can. Obviously, I have it as my application launcher for things like opening up configs or opening up different bookmarks or setting music to play during my streams and a bunch of other things because Dmenu is such a simple application that just does what it needs to do. All I want is a menu that has options in it that I can go through with my arrow keys or I can type. That is all. I don't need anything else but it does have some really nice patches to make it work just a touch better. For example, if I start typing and there's no other options left in the list, it'll automatically run that option. And other little things like this that I've built up over time that yes, there are things like Rothy, and yes, there are Wayland implementations like B menu, but they're not D menu. They are not this perfectly crafted version of D menu that I've gotten this workflow built around for all of this time. I can't use anything else. D menu is all I know at this point. Yeah, I will admit because it is a suckless application like ST, like DWM, it is kind of a pain to get it into a, you know, perfect state like I wanted it to be in. But D menu, unlike those other options, is perfectly usable out of the box. You can install it from your repos and not even realize there's a problem. But some of those patches just add in tiny little tweaks that nothing else does exactly the same way. My second application is MPV. I know VLC is a great program. I don't want to discredit the incredible work the VLC developers have done or the people that want to use VLC. I just don't care about most of what VLC does. I don't need a whole media suite in my video player. I don't need a visualizer. I don't need video conversion. I don't need video wallpapers, DVD programs, filters, and all of this other stuff, which if you need is great. I want to find a video and play the video. I also have a couple of plugins to do things like a visual guide as I go through the timeline, but those are very basic things. I don't need the rest of it. This is all I need. And I know there are GUI front ends for MPV to add nicer GUIs for it as well. I don't need those. I like the hotkeys in MPV. I just press space to start a video. I can take screenshots with a hotkey. I can do all of these little things that I want to do with a hotkey. I don't personally need buttons for them, but I do get it if that is your thing. And it's not like base MPV just doesn't have buttons. It has all the buttons you need. A play button, a pause button, skipping. You have audio tracks, you have subtitles, a mute, a full screen. What else could you possibly want from a video player? MPV is just incredible. Plus, my MPV conf is really, really small, but there is a lot of things you can configure, and you can make this video player work exactly the way that you want it to work. Now, let's talk about a project that is a lot less visual, but throughout this entire time, I have been using it. If I say, open up my bookmark script, or I open up a file manager, or I open up a terminal, all of this is being done with my probably favorite application, that being a project called SXHKD. This is a hotkey daemon. It is desktop independent, so it doesn't matter if I'm on i3, BSPWM, Awesome WM, Openbox, Gnome, KDE, literally doesn't matter whatsoever, this is a program that is going to run. 
Now, I do have different bindings for different desktops where they are desktop specific things like, you know, controlling BSPWM, for example, but the vast majority of this, I don't have to reconfigure if I go to a new X11 desktop. X11 being the specific thing there. Losing this when I go to Wayland is really, really annoying because I have to take all of these keys and convert it into a new format. And look, I really don't want to do that. There is a lot of keys in here and I'm very used to them and I really don't want to have to rewrite them. This is one of those things that made it really hard for me to leave X11 and even try out something like Hyperland. I just didn't want to go through the effort of having to rewrite everything again. I've done it, but it's a pain because as you might notice, some of these lines are not a single hotkey. This one has four separate hotkeys on it. This one, two separate hotkeys. This one, two separate hotkeys. And a bunch of these lines are all merged together. This one is six separate things on the same line. Like, rewriting this is not a five minute operation. Earlier I mentioned music playing, but what am I actually using? Well, right now a front end called NCM PCPP, but the front end doesn't really matter. This can be replaced with countless other things. That's because I'm using MPD, the music player daemon, and there are countless front ends that run on top of it. Some of them are terminal based, some of them are GUI based, but all of them use the exact same music server. So I don't have to go and migrate my music to another location, another service. It's just all in the one place and it just works. And that's all that matters. Yeah, it was a little bit of a pain to get it working when I first set it up. I had these issues where it wasn't using the right config, and then when it did use the right config, it wasn't finding the right folder. But now that it works, I don't touch it. It just keeps doing what it needs to do. What's really nice about MPD is it supports a system called Empress, Media Player Remote Interfacing Specification, which is a long way to say controlling MPD outside of MPD, which allows me to do things like have media keys work, which isn't sort of a default if you're using a window manager. So I combine this with another tool called Player CTO, which is basically a lightweight terminal application for running these different Empress commands. So I combine this with another application called Player CTO, which is basically a lightweight CLI application for running these Empress commands. So if I press audio next on my keyboard, it runs MPD next. If I do audio previous, it does previous. If I do audio play, it does play pause. Now this one about uh, Super F5 here, that's because I don't actually have a stop button on this keyboard. But regardless, play a CTO plus MPD plus I don't really care about the MPD interface because I just look at it for maybe five seconds. That's going to be a hard thing for me to replace. And I don't really see any reason to replace it. It does what I need. Something I do fairly often is gaming. Right now playing through Baldur's Gate 3, and I do have a PS5 over here that's just out of frame, but it's basically just a glorified PS4 emulator. Most of my gaming is done on Linux, and as most of my gaming is done on Linux, most of my gaming is done through Proton, and sometimes I need to make use of Proton GE. I know how to install Proton GE manually. I don't want to do it. Much like I know how to install Arch Linux, but I don't want to do it. So, I just automate the process. And luckily in the case of Proton GE, there's an application called ProtonUpQt. It is a very simple QT application, which pretty much at the click of a button, I can just add in any new version I want to add, and I'm good to go. Also, I can do the exact same thing over on Lutris as well, adding in different versions of Lutris GE, DXVK, and various other things. Adding in a bunch of different tools like WineGE, Lutris Wine, DXVK, and all these other things that you might want to be adding. I don't use most of the features, I pretty much just add in Proton GE. But if you want to add these other things, go ahead and do so. Honestly, you're not impressing anyone by installing Proton GE manually, just use the tool that automates it and save yourself some time. Now, no matter how many years pass and no matter how many great GUIs we get, one thing is always going to remain true. Linux has a lot of terminals. Some of them have all the bells and whistles. 
in more ways than one, like the GNOME Terminal, and others are like ST, where out of the box, they're basically non-functional, they don't have things like scroll back, and you're expected to add in additional features as you want them. But there is one terminal that no matter what I try to do, I just keep going back to it. That being Alacrity. Now, like most terminals, it doesn't look very impressive. I don't really care about having like menus in my terminal, I'm never going to click them. If I want to go and configure it, I'll just configure it from a config file because that's how you configure things on Linux. I don't really get the idea of configuring things from a menu, but the Alacrity config is this giant YAML file, which I've had for a while, so there's probably like new things that I haven't added to it yet. But this file, as I change things, it dynamically loads it. So if I go and do something like, say, modify this and save it, it's going to change. But also, if there's a mistake in the config, it doesn't crash the application. It just tells me, hey, there is a mistake on this line, go and fix it, which is great. I really don't like applications that crash on buggy configs. One thing I really love is shipping the config file with documentation right inside of it. Yes, it adds a bit more bloat in the config. I don't really care. I don't want to go and dig through some documentation somewhere to find how the configuration works. This is nice for me. And when it comes to configuring things like hotkeys, the hotkey system is really straightforward as well. Like this, even if you don't understand how the additional functionality works, you can kind of piece it together and make it work the way you want it to work. And as someone who modified their config three years ago and then makes minor tweaks here and there, it is nice to have a really intuitive config system because I don't remember how to configure it every time I go back to it. I don't want to relearn this really weird system. This is nice and simple. And also, I've kind of fallen for the meme of GPU accelerated terminals. I know some people just don't care, and some people think it's kind of dumb, but look, you're probably right. There's probably not that many reasons to have a GPU accelerated terminal, but in the cases where it does matter, hey, it's nice to have. Now, I know someone's probably going to say, hey, why don't you try out Kitty? And I'm sure Kitty is great as well, and it has that additional, like, image functionality stuff built in. This goes back to the MPV thing. I don't care. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't care about the additional functionality. Alacrity does everything I need it to do, and at this point, I'm just really comfortable with it. Plus, I don't use these, but there's also a Windows and a Mac OS version as well. So if I ever found myself on those systems, I could migrate my config over and just keep using the exact same terminal. And I don't need things like multiplexing, tabs, splits, all this stuff built into my terminal. If I wanted that, I would just use tmux on top of the terminal, because then I could migrate that to other terminals as well. So, the final application. If you've seen my thumbnails before, if you're watching this, you probably have, you know that I have to take a lot of pictures myself. None of those, except maybe like a couple where I forgot, are repeated photos. Every single one is unique. So how do I do that? Well, I have my phone here. And this thing. I put my phone on this and, you know, it just does the job. But then I need to get the pictures onto the computer. And that's being done with simple MTPFS. So MTP is the media transfer protocol. This is the standard for getting media off of your Android device. Now, there are a lot of options available on Linux. We have things like the Android File Transfer, MTPFS, JMTPFS, Simple MTPFS, Go MTPFS, LibMTP. But look, this goes back to something I mentioned before. I want a simple solution. And a couple of years ago, I wrote a script that just mounts this device and does nothing else. Most of this is just additional stuff to like make it all work nicely, but the important part is I check the devices, I list out the devices available, 
and then I mount the device. Like, this is the entire command that I need to run to mount the device. And then when I want to unmount the device, I just use fuse amount dash u. That is all I need to do. I don't need a GUI for it to, like, select between different devices. I don't need all of this additional functionality. There is one phone that is going to be connected at one time, so just connect the device. I could probably convert the script to one of these other tools if I desperately needed to, but simple MTPFS, once again, just does everything I need it to do. And that's a reoccurring trend. If I don't need the additional functionality, I don't really want it. Like, it's nice to have if you need it, sure, but I don't. <laughs> so, honorable mentions to things like NeoVim. NeoVim is incredible. Yes, Basic Vim was great as well, but NeoVim is basically like a modern take. It takes what Vim did and then builds upon it. Like, Vim took what Vide did and then builds upon it. ZSH is also great. Bash, it's a great standard that most distros are going to rely on. For ZSH out of the box, pretty unusable. Once you go and copy, you know, Luke Smith's configuration for it, it's actually pretty good. OBS, all my videos are done with OBS. I know there are other video recording tools, but OBS is by far the most powerful thing available on Linux. And I actually use that functionality. I use different scenes, I use different overlays, I use these different filters. I'm never gonna leave OBS because why would you do that? But hey, maybe better tools will come up in the future and I'll find a reason to actually use them. But for now, these are tools that I haven't been able to replace. Like, believe me, I have tried in some cases, and nothing has really felt, you know, good enough to replace what I needed this to do. I'm sure there are great tools out there, and if those tools are great for you, please keep using them. But if you want a suggestion for something new, try out some of these. So if you like this video, go like the video, and if you really like the video, let me know what tools you rely on that you're never going to replace. Also, go and like the video. Uh, if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, click the Patreon subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and how could I forget the most important tool, that being Linux.